people. I'm saying, well, why? You knew that this needs to be addressed, and it doesn't need to be a long term uh, mm -hmm. thing just because you can't find somebody, which they do. They just have these long, dreaded hiring practices that need to be that needs to fill uh, jobs. Right. And and that explains why the backup in, in between appointments and being having your needs met is be, lack of personnel yeah. sometimes. That's, well, we keep hearing that too, so yeah. that makes a lot of sense how you say it like that. Yeah. You're right. I'm I'm not, not, and they bus faced me, and I'm just saying, well, <laughs> when do you think I would be able to get my, right. just for instance, my reimbursement? <laughs> I put my money in, I just time. want my money back. Right. This is what they promised uh, me. What's your favorite? And they said, well, it'd be two to three weeks, and I'm saying, well, wow. Uh, yeah. Well, we only have two well, people that. that's working the system. I said, hire four more. What? Right. Two people out of all of Dallas behave. What city are you from? I lose the words that I'm trying to be wow. civil. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. We're from Texas, raised in Parker, Arizona. Yeah, boy. Here, record for me. Get, make sure you get Parker, Parker, Arizona. No, is that by, is that for Parker Dam? Mm -hmm. No. South Parker Dam. South Parker Dam. South Parker Dam. Right, you can get Parker Dam. What's going on? Mm -hmm. Is it? Okay. I'm going to be okay, posting this. Yeah. yeah, that was one of the ones they built, uh, when they That's built like the Hoover Dam, too, right? Is that the same era? Uh... No, it's a few years before. Oh, was Matter it? Fact, okay. Uh, there was a civil war between Arizona and California, and like 20 people got killed in the uh, National Arizona and California National Guard shooting at each other. Uh, I didn't know because, that story. Because there's an aqueduct. That's what <clears throat> Parker Dam was built for. Was a for the to, uh, for an aqueduct to pump water to Southern California. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I'm good. There's a pipeline and a canal and you could drive a cell when you came in. Mm -hmm. Well Arizona <coughs> wanted their share of the water too. Mm -hmm. Because there's I don't, all the veterans here, you're the only one yeah. that's in yeah. Arizona and California. Insane. Well, they essentially the came to an accommodation that yeah. uh, mm -hmm. after like nineteen seventy two or something, Arizona could start construction of a uh, an aqueduct. Yeah. So they've got an aqueduct now called the Central Arizona Project right. that flows from uh, right above Parker Dam all the way to, to Phoenix and then to Tucson. Yeah, the history of the water there from Hoover Dam and everything is incredible too. So, all right, yeah. we'll, we'll move on here. Okay, uh, did we already say his name? No. Okay, can you say and spell your name? Uh, my name is Sam Martin, S A M M A R T I N. And when, where did you serve? I served. Uh, went to basic at Fort Knox, Kentucky. I was a tanker, and then I spent three years in Germany, in Erlangen, Germany. What's been your experience with the VA? Um, I didn't know I had any VA benefits. Uh, I served 15 years total between uh, going back to Fort Knox as an instructor, served at Fort Bliss, Ooh. Fort Carson, uh, Gallon Field, Idaho, you know, all over the place, and uh, Colorado Springs, yeah, Park Carson, let's see. And then uh, I, I thought I had a good civilian job, I was in the Army Reserve, and so I switched to the National Guard so I'd only have to go locally. Well, it turned out not to be such a good job, and then I couldn't get back into the Reserve because I left them, and so I wound up uh, getting out of the National Guard in 93. After 15 years, I uh, got injured on a civilian job and couldn't do the physical anymore. Started putting on weight and nearly tore my left foot off uh, when I slipped on a civilian job. And so, wasn't service connected, so, you know, wasn't, wasn't nothing they could do for me. Uh, they wanted me to stay uh, another year because I still had time on my contract. But uh, I was hurting too bad, but, yeah, and I was getting embarrassed about my weight getting higher and higher. And but uh, I just had it was time for me to go. They, they kept telling me that I had a break in service, even though I had pay receipts. Yeah, every year they do a review and say, you know, you've got sure 12 years mm -hmm. of service. Well, I had pay documents for 15. And after like the fourth year in a row of them telling me, you know, I had three years less service than what I did. I got, I got fed up and I got yeah. injured. And, you know, basically my depression took over and I quit. So it's it's just the bureaucracy that we keep hearing about. That's that's yeah. how you is that how you describe the VA? Yeah. 
Maybe you start off something like, uh, I described well, the VA as being a bureaucracy, something like that. Can you start with that? Um, I had no contact with the VA until 2009. I got out of the National Guard in 1993. I had no idea I had any benefits. When I got out of the regular Army, they had me a voucher for uh, a guaranteed home loan for $12,000 and a boot in the ass. And that's all I knew. Uh, a guy from the Personnel Records Center in St. Louis called me and told me, you know, you still got time on your contract. If you're not working, come play with the Army Reserve for us. You go one, you know, one week a year and you're good, you know, you know, it's good, you know, towards your, uh, your, your service. It may not count if you have to do more to get, uh, it to be a good year for, for retirement. But I did that. I went to uh, Fort Carson for two months. I went to Fort Bliss for a month. I went to Fort uh, Knox for three months, twice. And, you know, so I had plenty of you know, days of active duty to be good years for retirement, all the way up until I switched to the National Guard. But yeah, I know I still haven't got to the VA yet. Yeah. Well. Um, I first got in touch with the VA in San Antonio, Texas. My uncle is a, a disabled veteran. He had been fighting for his disability for 11 years. And it finally came through. So he didn't have a place to live. He was living in a, a uh, travel trailer that if the ASPCA saw you bring a dog in that thing, they'd arrest you. <laughs> it was horrible. <laughs> So when my dad died, I decided, well, I'll go help him build a house because he had already bought all the materials when he got his lump sum from the back pay. Well, that didn't work out. I helped him get the house, helped him get it dried in. You know, he didn't have the interior finished, but his attitude became uh, unbearable. So I left there. I had spent a good bit of what I inherited from my dad on helping him get that house built. It was my dad's younger brother. And I didn't ever expect him to pay me back. But I was hoping he would at least you know, show me a little consideration. But I left there. I moved back to the town where I had originally had been born, which is Weatherford, Texas. And uh, the one thing that my uncle did for me was he got me started with a VA. He got to help me go there and get a VA ID card. And I got, uh, I got started there. That's about all I can say. Um, the doctor that interviewed me on my first trip to the VA, she would ask, ask me a question. So I would say something like, I have you know, severe headaches frequently. And she'd say, no, you don't, and write down something else. You know, yeah. I was shocked, you know. I, she told me I was diabetic. This was two years before the VA diagnosed me with diabetes. I am now diabetic, but she told me I was a diabetic then. She told everybody that walked in they were diabetic. I don't know if she was getting a kickback on selling the pills or what, but uh, it, it weirded me out, and I didn't want to go back to the VA after that because you know you tell her. You know, I injured my left foot, so it's fine, and without even taking my shoe off. There's nothing wrong with it. I saw you walk in here. <laughs> so, well, how do we, how do we fix it? What, what's the solution? Uh, it's a, the problem is it's a bureaucracy. You get more than 100 people working toward one thing, and half of them are going to be hiding and shamming. They're going to be, you know, some of the departments at this VA here in Dallas are impeccable. The uh, orthotics and prosthetics people are top of the line. They'll do anything they can to help you. Um, some of the departments don't care if you live or die. I can tell you horror stories if you like. Mm -hmm. So it's it's not the people, because there's good people. There's some bad, there's some good. It's got to be the system, right? 
Well, it's a matter of what day of the week you walk in on. Mm -hmm. I uh, was traveling around town with some friends and I had, I started having severe abdominal pain, I mean really severe. Like, you know, I was looking to see if I was shot or something. And so my friends basically had to carry me back onto the train, took me back to the VA and went to the emergency room, had to sit in the waiting room for three hours. And then they get me in there, they do a couple of blood tests, and they go, oh, it's just indigestion. And after about eight hours, it subsided. They sent me to the pharmacy to get some anti antacids and stuff and sent me home. Uh, about 48 hours later, it recurred only 10 times worse. I was ready to either call 911 or shoot myself, and I'm serious. It really was killing me. And so I dialed 911. Matter of fact, uh, my friends were so worried about me, one of them wouldn't go home. He stayed with me for two days and wound up going to the, uh, to the emergency room with me. I called the fire department. They took me to uh, Medical City over here to, uh, uh, to the emergency room. The, they took my blood and then they started giving me pain medication, Demerol and morphine, and lots of it, because I was really in pain. I've never experienced anything like that. I've been burned, stabbed, shot, you know, hit in the head with a pipe, but, uh, you know, nothing like, like the pain I was experiencing there. And uh, it, I'm kind of an odd person. I don't get high from opiates. I get rigor mortis. I'll just be locks every muscle up, and I just can't move, and I just black out. But it it doesn't help the pain much. It just makes me non-responsive to it. So what is it? Um, they by the time I they said they were going to admit me to mm -hmm. make sure I was stable, and by the time they got my blood work back, they said absolutely positively, no 100% uh, chance that. It's pancreatitis that this, and they started doing tests, and it turned out it was uh, a block uh, gallbladder. Uh, the the gall duct goes from the liver to the stomach, was uh, blocked with uh, like a crystalline material, and that was what was causing my pancreas to act up, and causing you know causing all the pain. Well. I was pretty much out of it because they were hitting me with morphine about every half hour. And uh, I woke up about 14 days later. I had asked repeatedly to be transferred to the VA. In my few lucid moments, well, they didn't transfer me to the VA. So now I've got $30,000 in debt to this hospital that I have no way to pay. You know, that's like two and a half years if I don't eat, breathe, or, or sleep indoors. And uh, so uh, I went to the patient ag advocate at the VA and she said, well, bring me all the bills and we'll, we'll get it paid for. And the lady is, it tried hard. She, she believes in her job and she tries, but I kept getting got the ruling back like three times, VA services were available. You just didn't avail yourself. And that has got to be so, uh, how do you feel at this point in your life, knowing you served your country, knowing you've done all this, you've got to feel like just kicked to the curb, like you don't matter. How, how, does, how does this make you feel? Well, it isn't helping my, uh, my psychological problems. I have a severe depression, uh, suffer from severe anxiety, um, just it's been completely, I don't get angry about it, I get depressed. I get depressed, I get anxious, I can't sleep. Um, my anxiety is so bad that 
just knowing that I was coming over here today and I was you know really wanting to come and do this but I didn't sleep last night at all if I'm going to the plan on going to the grocery store the next day frequently I won't be able to sleep if I'm leaving the house you know my hands are shaking it's uh, Fred will tell you how do you feel about going to the VA to get help for that? I've gone over and over uh, trying to get help for my depression. They just switch me pill to pill, back and forth, usually the same ones over and over. While the psychiatrist sits there and uh, yawns and looks out the window and so how's it going? Mm -hmm. Flips through his Quran, you know. It's, you know, it took me four years to get a different psychiatrist finally. And I don't think it's going to be much different. I've been trying to get treatment for depression for the last five and a half years or more. Did you file for six. your service connected, Sam? Yeah. What happened with that? Well, I got 0% disability which is better than it sounds right. because with 0% disability I don't have to pay for my medication I don't know, maybe it's time I, I'll never have a copay at the VA unless